This is the stuff dreams are made of. I'm writer collector Ryan Condal. And I'm writer collector Dave Mandel. And you're listening to the original movie prop collecting podcast brought to you by Heritage Auctions uh, this week in more ways than one because this is our big Heritage Auction show, the big yeah. Heritage Auctions, HA.com, July 25th and 26th, 2024 in 24th and 25th, Dave. What did I say? 25th and 26th. That's what That's my right. catalog says. Does it? That's what the front of my catalog says. It does. Not, oh, you're right. 25th not, and 26th. <laughs> is it, it changed? I guess they said. I think they, they must. We didn't get sent this. We got, we downloaded it. Well, now... We downloaded, we downloaded this. I, I was, I, the banner on Heritage was forever saying the 24th and 25th. I'm we looking at this. Now this, we're doing a live, a live check. And how are you as we do searching for something <laughs> that seemed like this is not where I thought the wheels were going to fall off. I, a lot of places I thought the wheels were going to fall off, but God damn it. They're a sponsor. I no, feel like it, we it, should it, know. The banner now says 25th and 26th. I'm, I'm telling you, Dave, okay. the banner online for a while said 24th and 25th. Okay, so I'm not, I committed I, at least to I'm not crazy is what yeah. you're telling me. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. July 25th, 26th, 2024 in Dallas, Heritage Auctions, HA.com. I think uh, they I think they saw they they saw us coming and they're like, well, stuff dreams are made of comes out on Wednesdays. So we better get a couple of days for we people better. To, I like that. Yeah, I like we that. better yeah. let them listen to the to the episode. Let give them a day. Yep. Yeah, because they know uh, how, please how much pay attention. impact we have on their bidding. Yeah, I was going to say, please pay attention to your schedule. We're going to have a live show where we'll be talking about the catalog live with anyone that wants to talk about the catalog live. That'll be coming up. I think maybe the Saturday before the auction or the Sunday before the auction. What did we say? Were we thinking the Sunday? Cause you're traveling yeah, on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, the Sunday right before the auction. So, so I think Sunday we're gonna... the 21st, we're going to have yes. a live Heritage Auctions catalog show. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can get Joe or Brian or somebody to pop on as well. Maybe answer a question or two, but if you've got some questions, you can send them in in advance or join us live on our YouTube channel uh, to uh, check everything out and talk to us and all good things. That'll be fun. That'll be our first, I think maybe our first live show of the new season. We, I have no idea. We've lost all track of when we're recording and why we're recording, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no, that should be. Yeah. I think we're going to, we'll do, we'll do some liveies as they call them in the business and the podcasting business. But uh, I think that that should be our first. So there you go. All righty. And once again, I am out of sync, which part we'll fix later, which is very exciting. Thank you, Riverside. Brought to you by Riverside, makers of out of sync uh, podcasting sound and video. Uh, I so thought that's I, yeah. I, I just thought that you'd gotten really good at at um, like some kind of like voice. new form of ventriloquism yeah. where you. Yes. It feels like the old uh, the Bill Murray Saturday Night Live sketch, the Hercules movie. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Hercules, move a rock. Yeah, I would yeah. like to move a rock, perhaps a smaller rock, you know. So it's just kind of that. Poorly dubbed. Yeah. yeah. Poorly dubbed uh, Spaghetti Western. Yes. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to look at you because it's freaking me out. I'm sorry. So. Uh, sometimes it resyncs as we go. Uh, well, let me know. Those if it of does. you listening uh, in your in the safety of your cars or homes are just going, "What the fuck?" But yeah, the picture and the sound fall out of sync for the uh, the YouTube feed, uh, and it's very annoying. And what's extra annoying is that the Riverside help desk gave us this nonsensical thing, some changes to make to the camera, like turn the autofocus off and the auto white balance off and some other nonsense, which has resulted in a much lovelier picture of me. I believe uh, mm -hmm. I have a little more color in my uh, mm -hmm. lips and cheeks and my red shirt, but nevertheless, uh, it has been absolutely yeah. useless. But now it's, um, yeah. it's kind of worse. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Riverside. Slightly, slightly more out of sync. It's getting maybe better i think as i am talking oh that's good yeah oh fantastic it. yeah there i solved it um uh you're good uh you getting ready for your trip uh east are you yep. sort of ready i'm very excited to see you in person that'll yep. be very fun uh, a lot happy, of good happy. feedback uh, to the unboxing. Your first unboxing video went live. By the time this airs, many more will have been up. But uh, please go to our YouTube channel and check out uh, the unboxing videos we've been doing from all of our wins, recent wins and purchases and whatnot. Uh, and uh, please subscribe. That helps us uh, subscribe and like. Uh, and uh, that, that always helps, as it does on the podcast apps. Uh, yes. And I have we... more, more unboxing videos banked. Very exciting. We come, might have so. to start doing two a week or something because I got a bunch too. This is very exciting. Yeah. 
Goody, goody. Yeah, this uh, is uh, fun. This is uh, this is what happens when you over purchase. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Um, uh, it's like I used to sort of, I used to be able to sort of vaguely hide this kind of stuff from from Becky, and now it's just sort of like, well, where are you and Freddie going? Over to the apartment to shoot an unboxing video. Unboxing of what? <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's a lot of that. It's like she's torn because on the one hand, he and I are doing some things together, and it's Father getting and him, son. yep, getting him out of his room and video games and whatnot and on the yeah. other hand what did i buy so that's very exciting yeah yeah uh, it's a it's a it's a tricky, maternal tricky instincts balance. yeah tricky balance kind of <laughs> lose themselves lose the <laughs> to, battle just, um just right there and you're yeah. of course like well we have to do it for the podcast stop um, bothering me we have a giant show because we're going to go through this catalog, which is, uh, yes. it's not huge, but it's, there's some stuff. There's um, stuff. Do you have a quick what's new in props of any sort? Do you have anything that you uh, wanna... Other than to tea, I, I, I filmed a much desired, much uh, anticipated, let's say, unboxing video just this evening. And uh, it's in process. So I will, I will tease that as my Ooh, what's new exciting. in props because I, I got um, I feel actually a few things in today, but that, that was, there, there was a big one in and amongst so that uh that uh is coming coming your way to to youtube uh very shortly so how about that Ooh, what's what's new exciting. and props very for exciting. you dave i have a quick one by the way on our unboxing videos i noticed something which is interesting you know what's in your boxes i don't know if you're aware of that like you're purchasing is it controlled enough yes that I'm your a boxes collector. you know what's in your boxes I realized my unboxing videos at this point are just me grabbing boxes and kind of like sometimes maybe thinking from the weight, it's might be one of three or four things, That's but really amazing. I'm opening them up and kind of going like, Oh, Oh, it's this. Oh, um, here's something to say about it or to talk about or here's a story but i did realize like that's what's going on so so you're nice enjoying thing. it as as the it's fans like mystery would. box yes it's like what Ooh, i wonder what i got it's like that <laughs> do you um, do you do you log in and then watch your own unboxing videos to exactly like, what yourself? was that again but uh speaking of unboxing for what's new in props it's sort of a prop but uh i think uh, oh okay this is very exciting this is this i do know what it is um the lag by the way is crazy now um mm -hmm. so this is a box and i'm going to open it right here in front of people this uh i got an email about this last week and i am super excited about it you'll see it is sort of uh prop adjacent but certainly uh movie fan fun so that's what was exciting so i don't know what the camera can see or not see but here we go all right, all right. Um, this is what I'm the on the want. on the very edge of my seat. Yeah, it's kind of exciting, isn't it? I saw this. And it, I was it's like, good radio because you hear all the crinkly, crinkly of yeah, the. Yeah, you get uh, to hear all the crinkle. The packaging. All the bubble wrap within the bubble wrap. This is very exciting. Uh, brought to you by Bubble Wrap. Thankfully, it was uh, not a, a crate, or else, otherwise this would be. No, I'd have to be was... doing a lot of vamping. I'd be like one of the uh, one of the. Uh, the Yankees announcers when they're um, it's raining, the rain, either rain, I was going to say raining or when they're like changing pitchers in the middle of oh, the game, and sure. they, but they weren't quite ready to do it. So can you see that <laughs> the starting Five pitcher bombed later. out? Uh, so this is from, uh, <laughs> that's the, the, awesome. The, yeah. They just made these, uh, at Quentin Tarantino's theater, uh, the, uh, the new Beverly, they made a bunch of, uh, bounty law, uh, mugs. They call this milk glass because it's 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 uh it's white, uh, and I got the red one, so it's red on white. That's so and good. It's a, it's a bounty law kind of a mug that you would have gotten if you were, I guess, a, a, a child fan of the show in yes. uh, in the seventies. Like this in this, I guess. Well, or was this, like late sixties, right? Oh, late sixties. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. They call it old milk glass made with pride. That's fantastic. Not I need heat, one of those. Not heat resistant glass. Do not use this product with sudden temperature changes. Do not microwave it, oven, or dishwasher. Yeah, this is going to be a disaster. I may uh, this may go on my desk and be a pen holder. Is what this yeah. may be, but I'm very excited. Oh, uh, I love yeah. that. Can I walk into the theater and buy one of those? I don't know. They were doing a street sale that I did not get to, and you definitely can go through their merch site uh, through the theater and order it. So, uh, okay, I highly recommend it. I believe it was uh, red, blue green and a third and a fourth color sorry okay. i don't remember what the other color was but uh, well you made the right choice dave uh thank you quentin tarantino not that you gave this to me but uh i love that movie so much and uh, i i do i really do too 
bounty hunter. Very. I very think that's exciting. right at the top of his oeuvre. I, I, I just, especially of the later films, it's my absolute favorite. Maybe I have a soft spot for just the subject the, matter. Yeah. Well, that too. But I was going to say I have a soft spot still for Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, just because they were sure. the the early ones. You know, where it was like, what am I seeing? Who is this? But uh, I just really loved it. Uh, and I have, at this point, I've indulged in the novelization, uh, the movie itself. I one day keep hoping that there'll be like all the deleted scenes or something, although I don't know if he ever does that. Didn't and he threaten just, to make a Bounty Law TV series? They, at some point they said, because like, I think Netflix was involved in the in the production of this or something, that it was going to be like, I thought there was going to be like, they were gonna. There's like like twenty hours of other footage and stuff that they were gonna put on Netflix at some point or another, and they just announced they're working on a book, a book on that and Inglorious Bastards by, uh, oh gosh, I'm not gonna remember the guy name. that's doing J all those yeah, fancy those really ups. great film books. I just ordered. There's a taxi driver one. It's J yeah. something or other. Yeah, I need J that. Tie. You sent me the links. Here, I'm gonna cover J Glennie. No, oh, we'll <laughs> paste that in later. And Bart will just uh, say yeah. It. And we'll, we uh, but his books that. are wonderful. Uh, so check that out. But uh, Bounty Law Mug, uh, I, they are not a sponsor, but God, I love those mugs. So yeah, check it out. Great. The New uh, Beverly. Check yeah. it out while you're in LA. Should we, uh, should we yes, dive please. in? Yes, please. All righty. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite late here. So we're going to, oh, we're going to storm yeah. through this catalog. We're storm through. So I've got, I don't know, I, I wrote down like sort of, I don't know, maybe tw not 20, but I wrote down my sort of faves. This is, as everyone can remember from last season, sort of our, faves version and then we're gonna on the live show sort of uh dig a little deeper perhaps and, talk and do about categories things. and all yeah. those kind of things that we did last time we'll, we'll of course take fan questions too so if you guys want to pre-write in anything that you'd like us to highlight talk about uh please do but these would be these would be the things that i think dave and i would first earmark as we were yes, going these the are catalog. my uh this is like the stuff i'm paying attention to uh, uh the catalog starts as uh as I guess profiles uh, in history, old catalogs used to with the black and white stills, which has moved over yep. to uh, uh, Heritage now that Joe is over there. Um, not my area of anything particular. I did look at a couple of the autographs. I was looking to see if there was a Dave or David. To one, David. But I, I didn't see anything like that. To but Harold. My, lucky. Yeah, to, uh, to there's Harold, a, a lucky Harold. Yes. There's a lucky uh, Audrey Hepburn uh, ins inscription and uh, for, for a guy named Harold. So... I was, uh, I was excited to, to see the you want to change your name, yeah. I might was thinking name, about yeah. it. Thinking about it. Um, my first one, though, is in this section. I got a couple in this little section. But um, uh, eight, nine, everything in this auction, I believe, is eight, nine, although I'm, I can't remember if the later ones. Yes. Eight, so nine. Look, yes. Yeah. Uh, eight, nine, zero, four, three. This is uh, Alex Raymond, Look Magazine, Volume 6, uh, Number 21, Splash Page, Pencil Illustration, uh, uh, art group of uh, two pieces. Uh, Alex Raymond uh, is the wonderful artist behind Flash Gordon, uh, the original, yeah. uh, the original uh, strips of Flash Gordon, the creator of Flash Gordon. Just unbelievably cool. Um, and these are just some really gorgeous, not from any kind of a story that I know, but the work is just just fabulous. Exquisite, it's just beautiful yeah. pencil work. Um, these sort of uh, figures being held up on a a line of hands. I mean, I, I'm not even describing it. And then some war footage, uh, just really, really wonderful piece. Um, you know, I, I'm no idea where it's going to go, but it's starting at a very sort of reasonable $5,000 number, uh, from the esteemed collection of Charles Crane. Uh, not sure who Charles Crane is, but that's okay. Uh, I just thought these were fabulous and I did want to call them out. They, uh, they, these two pieces were really, were really, really cool to me. So I thought that was really, really excellent. Uh, yeah, that's excellent. I actually, Dave, I had, I had flagged one a little before that. Oh my gosh. Uh, that I just wanted to talk about really Please. quickly. I just loved it because of what it is. It's uh, 89032. It's the Willis O'Brien and Brian or Byron Crab dinosaur concept sketch from king kong from 1933 rko king kong i i don't disagree i i it's funny i stared at this and i also stared at 33 which is the next lot which is one of the uh native shields also from king kong yeah the idea of obviously having something from king kong would be just incredible. because of what it what it yeah. is versus the the age or anything like that but i mean that what an important film and I mean, you have to imagine both of these things are going to be high on the list of a certain New Zealand-based uh, director. 
one would think, uh, one would think he would be interested for me. And this is not a criticism of the piece. You know, I, I guess when I looked at the art, the fact that Kong himself wasn't on it, I guess is why sure. it didn't make my list, but it might, it certainly made my, this is, you know, F an incredible list. So but, I, I don't uh, disagree. Yeah. 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 Another good, um, good one yeah. to also call out on our, on our, I can't believe this is here. <laughs> yeah, no, category. very much yeah. so. Like, like, how is this even existing? Um, you know, in a really wonderful way. Um, and I'll use that as a slight bridge. And by the way, there's a couple of interesting pieces of comic art. If you are interested, there's a Robert Crumb piece for from Premier Magazine that I I, I, remember. I flagged that up actually, yeah. Dave. Yeah, okay. I do want to talk it, about please. that one. Do you remember yeah. this? Were you a Premier Magazine? I was a subscriber to Premier Magazine. I mean, I, rem I remember Premier Magazine, but I can't say that I remember this ad. I just, uh, Dave, I love this thing. And like, we, as we know, I'm expanding into uh, comic art finally. And, and Crumb is a favorite of mine. Um, I love his satires. And I just, th this is a complete story. I just think it it's so cool. It is a wonderful, complete Hollywood based story it is also a fabulous Robert Crumb story that he's in and that you actually could dare I say hang on the wall because at no point is anyone <laughs> naked or having sex against their will or their yes. head shoved up their ass or any of yeah. those other wonderful yeah. charming things that <laughs> occasionally do turn other folks off that uh, we like I like I don't know you know I'm not uh, doesn't bother me. You're not a prude. Work. Yeah, I'm not a. But prude, you could you could put yeah. this in the uh, you could put this one in the living room. Yeah, you could hang this one anywhere. It's uh, it's basically about him. It's a really wonderful story about him attending the Oscars the year that the Crumb documentary was, uh, I believe, nominated, and his sort of being there but not really being a part of it, and ultimately just getting the just getting out of there, just kind of leaving the Oscars uh, in semi disgust, which uh, I thought was really just very. Yes, exactly. It's very, it's very in a nutshell. It's yes. very, and I, I empathize with it as a, as a writer. I feel like we, this is how we often feel at these things. Yeah. I would say, like human cockroaches, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, particularly on the movie side, yes, yeah, uh, uh, really, really cool piece. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a thousand percent with you uh, on that. That was just really neat. But very uh, the other one, one you, you I, were going to call out the Wonder Woman, yes. I was just going to mention the Wonder Woman. I didn't. I didn't write it down. Um, I just an HG Peter, the creator of Wonder Woman. It's a really beautiful piece of Wonder Woman riding a dinosaur. You know, one of these. I don't know why she's on a dinosaur, but it's just kind of great that she's on a dinosaur surrounded by cavemen. Uh, the title of the story is Stone Age Rodeo. Uh, like I said, worth checking out. But my next piece uh, in this sort of early. Uh, I don't even know what this section is because it's sort of like almost like the. It's not exactly the silent era, but it's, again, in this sort of stills and ephemera paper. area. A lot of paperwork, yes. Uh, 89051. This is a War of the Worlds. I'd mentioned this on one of the other shows. This is an Orson Welles letter. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, I also writing, flagged this Yeah, up. writing to this woman about the broadcast. And I just thought this was... What a uh, cool piece. Yeah, to use a yeah. period term, the cat's meow, I thought this was. <laughs> uh, I really, really dug this. And... Uh, you know, starting bid two thousand dollars. Look knows? at the gams yeah. on that letter, Dave. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't begin it's a real to tell tomato. You, couldn't begin to tell you what it's worth. Couldn't begin to tell you no. what I think it's worth. I just thought it was fabulous, and uh, and on the Mercury yeah. Theater letterhead too, which is yeah. particularly great. Which I kind of yes. want to just like steal and make my own Mercury Theater, uh, like just letterhead and just send letters to people on it for yeah. no reason, you know. Um, and really, signed... really cool. A signed Cary Grant letter right after it to Lodge. So if you're <laughs> lucky enough to be named Lodge, you can have both Cary Grant 54 and Lot 55, a uh, Rita Hayworth signature to you to Lodge. Lodge <laughs> was a very lucky man. Uh, I think I went to college with a Lodge. Uh, huh. Needless to say, he was the third or the fourth or something of that nature. Um and uh yeah he was quite a lodge so yeah he's exactly what you think he is the <laughs> full the full stereotype as you might imagine of someone named lodge uh but uh i don't know if he's listening i don't know if he's a collector but uh you know Cary grant rita hayworth uh looks like a couple more lodges yeah, in the next couple of lots a bunch you know? of these yeah who knows who this fine gentleman was? Oh, lo legendary sound and technical engineer Lodge Cunningham, whose industry career spans six decades. So there you go, Lodge Cunningham. Uh, Perfect. Very cool. I did think 
uh i i you know i know we're kind of like we're defeating the purpose of like the ones we call out but i did think 59 which was not signed to lodge but a humphrey bogart lauren bacall yeah. uh co-signed picture to no one not to lodge or anyone else not to david but that was really 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 that's cool. great yeah mm -hmm. um my next is 81 and 82 i don't know uh I don't know. Uh, yeah, are. I called out 81. Yeah, good. Okay, so this is funny. Um, I don't know if anyone is watching. I know you are or listening, I should say, to the current season of the Ben Mankiewicz uh, uh, TCM podcast, The Plot Thickens. They are doing John Ford. Uh, and what I have learned, among other things, they have three Oscars from John Ford here. Or is it two? I, I, no, three. Uh, they have How Green Was My Valley, and then one for the Battle of Midway documentary, and then one for his post uh december 7th pearl harbor documentary uh he never attended the oscars so he never picked <laughs> these once. up in person he won the winningest director. winningest director in the history of the academy the uh documentary category was invented for him because of these movies the battle of midway and uh and december 7th and uh these 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 films uh especially the midway and the december 7th are discussed in great detail in the Ben Mankiewicz podcast. Again, it's called The Plot Thickens. The Plot Thickens. It's the yeah. latest season. I believe it's season five. Each season has been different. Peter Bogdanovich, yeah. uh, Pam Greer. Pam Greer. Season four. And then uh, they did Lucille Ball. Bonfire so of the Vanity. Bonfire oh, you're right. Vanity Bonfire of the Vanity and Ball. Lucille Ball. So four. Yeah. This is season five. Check it out. These are amazing. He kind of started this film unit and made it a part of the Navy because he was obsessed with the military and was sort of like had a chip on his shoulder. That he'd never been in the military. So there he was at the, the goddamn battle of Midway. Got, he was got at wounded. the battle of Midway. He was at the mid battle of Midway, got <laughs> wounded at the battle of Midway. And there's one episode that's about, apparently he was at D-Day and may or may not have film stuff that has disappeared. They're, they're sort of about the search, but I mean, he was yeah. at D-Day too, but the Midway stuff, the footage, it's incredible. Uh, anyway. Uh, and you can see that online. It's like a 20 minute short film. Yeah. If you just look it up on YouTube, it's been colorized. So um, I don't know if there's a black and white version around, but you uh, check it. I mean, it's, this is one of the most famous battles of all time and it's yeah. on film because of John Ford. And it, no, that's it's, it's just wild. wild. These Oscars. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they need to go to the Academy. I hope they end up at the Academy. I hope yes, someone, one would, one I hope would the really three hope. of them are bought all together because all three should be there. How Green with my, Was My Valley is a wonderful film as well. Uh, but I was just blown away by the other, the, the Oscars for the other two. So, yeah, just, just wild. Um, my next thing kind of comes around uh, 100, uh, 8, 9, 100 or so. But yeah, I'm at 147 is my next, so go go for it. So Dave. my next thing, and it starts with 89098, and basically it's uh, the Stanley Kramer collection. Uh, Stanley Kramer was a wonderful uh, producer, director. Yeah. I think of him in the 50s and 60s, dealt with a lot of you know big issues, uh, the defiant ones, inherit the wind, uh, on this, you know, look who's coming to dinner. Trial. Yep, look who's coming to dinner. Judgment at Nuremberg. So these are these are big, hefty movies, and these are this is his script collection. And I just you know again like Death of a Salesman, uh, Lot One Hundred Three, High Noon, Lot One Hundred Five. Guess who's coming to dinner? One Twenty Six. They're all here. Obviously, the family don't uh, family put these into auction. These are his personal copies. They have notes on them. Some of them do. I, I just was blown away. Uh, I don't you know I. This would be again another another. This should this belongs in you know in the academy to me, but uh, really just incredible, uh, amazing just to see. Uh, so I was I was I was just I stopped here and I definitely spent they're, some time. They're beautiful and they're all yeah. leather bound and you know obviously yeah, you, you, you could feel them being in his office. I guess is the right. easiest way of putting it. Um, it's a mad 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 world. I, title after title, just you know a, a career you could only dream of. I. I I'm not quite sure what else to add to it, but uh, really, really something special here, a special collection that, uh, you know, is being sold script by script by script. So, you know, I think it's possible to grab one. Although, like I said, I do hope someone just comes in and gets them all and gets them to the Academy. I just another one that belongs at the Academy, but doesn't mean we can't bid. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I, I, I did, I did, I did want to kind of call that out. Um, and that's something I noticed about this auction. And maybe this is a little bit, you know, the last sort of 
year and change of heritage has been really these big single seller auctions. You know, if you think about it, you yeah. know, Planet Hollywood, the Greg Jean one and two, uh, before that was, uh, what's his name? The collector, uh, starts with an, was it John uh, Azarian? Azarian was in there. And then, uh, What's his name? Also, the TV guy too, right? Wasn't he? Didn't he have one as well? Oh, commissar, yeah, commissar. So we lot, you know, almost a year and a half, two years of these big single collections, and so this is like probably some of the stuff that they've gathered along the way. And there are within the auction these mini collections, like the Stanley Kramer collection, that I guess you couldn't really do an auction unto itself. Um, so I, I just I I thought that was really interesting. Um, I, the, the, the next area, there was sort of a, there's sort of an Edith head section that these are, I don't think they're coming specifically from any one person, but they have, they've built this really wonderful sort of, they're calling it like a best of Edith head. They've got just all of her big movies. Uh, and I, I just, I've always stare at these. I think you and I've had this conversation yeah. a million times. This has one of my f two favorite outfits from Vertigo, the, the green dress and the, green the, dress. Uh, that's the, the, the white jacket that's on the, the black. Costume. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These are fantastic. The Audrey Hepburn stuff. So I, I've got my eye on these. I don't know what else to yeah, say. Yeah, I called yeah. out the um, 89147, the Roman holiday uh, costume. It's it's Audrey, uh, yep. you know, my favorite, uh, you know, actress from from the that era, uh, the Silver Age. And um and it's Roman Holiday, which is just one of my absolute favorite films. I think yeah. one of the best third acts in in uh, in in cinema history. Uh, and I, I love this. And maybe, maybe it's time. I mean, there's a ton of these in. They make a particular. They take pains to call out that these are not recreations. Apparently, there were a bunch of those done during Edith Head's Road Show in the '70s. These are all original date that date to the period and the films were made, which means they were you know designs from the film. Uh, and a lot of them have that's... notes and OKs on them or, yeah. you know, if they're slightly different than what they finished as, you can see the notes to that effect. Like, like we're going to, you know, whatever, change this, change the sleeve and whatnot. So they really are they're you know, they're, they're works in progress in a great way. I mean, they're not works in progress, but they they are part of the production. They I show guess. The that's filmmaking. what I like. Yes, exactly. The filmmaking process. That's what I, I think uh, I, 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 I extra like about these. Some of them have seen numbers, uh, just really, really fantastic. And they run the gamut. It gets to tip, Tippi Hedren with birds um, and then a bunch of movies that I'm not as familiar with. But again, always even but big, big female stars like Funny Judy face. Garland yeah. stuff and you know, but obviously the Hitchcock stuff runs through it, which is just fantastic to see. Yes. Bunch of Grace um, yeah. Kelly, uh, bu a bunch of Audrey, um, Liz Taylor. Yep. As you said, to be had Lana here. Turner. And by the way, yeah. even a, uh, even a Mary Tyler Moore, uh, Laura Petrie from, uh, from the Dick Van Dyke show. Uh, oh, yeah, although that. sadly the drawing of, uh, is not really Laura Petrie, Mary Tyler Moore, who, every human sort of had a crush on right. at, at the time, right. but yeah, but really wonderful. Shirley MacLaine is in here. Shirley so MacLaine. some just, just great titles. And so just this other, another sort of interesting uh, mini section, just again, something I noticed as I was going through, uh, going through the, the, this catalog, these sort of sections and sort of mini collections and a lot of Oscars, by the way, eight, nine, yeah. one, seven, seven uh, cinematography award for American in Paris. Uh, Alfred Gilks and John Alton, best color cinematography. Um, again, just a lot of Oscars. And again, I, I guess I keep thinking those belong, uh, you know, in the museum, but back, hey, back they, they can't yeah. all, uh, they can't all end up there. So uh, perhaps your opportunity, if you've ever wanted an Oscar. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Uh, where are you next? Sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm uh, 222. Oh, well, I got one more for you, and it's okay. one one more of these mini collections. Uh, this starts with 89196, uh, but I'm calling it 89198. This is the uh, George Chakiris collection, uh, and in particular, he was Bernardo in West Side Story, and he's yeah. got a whole bunch of stuff from West Side Story. And 198 is a Doc's Drugstore set design artwork yeah. by Boris Levin, and you can even see Anita in the red dress uh really just just sort of that sort of uh sort of moment where they basically almost sort of assault her or do assault her depending on your take on the movie um 
but uh, Rita uh, Moreno uh, really, or uh, what is she, EGOT winner, Rita Moreno, uh, yeah. and uh, West Side, her in West Side Story. And this moment, there's a, a couple other things, his script, there's something that uh, Bernardo wore, his wrist thing, whatever. Um, I just, I thought this was a, a bunch of scripts from other projects and things. I just thought this was really just wonderful to see. And then earlier, you know, we were talking about Once Upon a Time uh, in Hollywood. Uh, there's that scene on the set of the, 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 the show, the pilot he's making. And uh, the guy's like, is it true? You were, o you almost replaced Steve McQueen in the, the great escape. And he sort of says like, well, it never happened, but I heard I was on a list with three Georges and it's like, who? And he says like Papard something and Chakiris. And <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I, when I saw the George Chakiris stuff, I, it made me, uh, it made me think of that line a bunch. So I was very excited about that. So, yeah. <laughs> very uh, good. Hit, you want to hit your uh, next one, which is also I wrote down as well. Yes. We share uh, our brain. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Eight nine two two two. It's yeah. it's a an archive of sixty seven original Mary Poppins storyboards by Dale Barnhart. Uh, uh, they're not all shown in the auction, but there's a bunch of them called out in the PDF catalog. You can scan through a bunch online, and they're just they're go they're gorgeous. And you just they they evoke the film. I mean, you look at each one of these. If you've ever seen the film, you'll just you'll you'll know exactly what scene you're looking at and um i think they're i think they're terrific and my my kids love this movie particularly my my eldest uh when um uh, when they're sort of looking for something to watch this often makes it on which just delights me because the film is basically 100 years old at this point right uh <laughs> at least in their eyes and they um and the fact the fact that they just they they love it like it's from their generation i just i just really enjoy it it shows how timeless the movie is uh, this is something to think about, too. And look, I, I hate approaching it from this side, but it has to be pointed out, which is this 67 st storyboards. Uh, it's a lot. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm guessing you are if you are interested in this lot, you are definitely going to be bidding against people that are thinking of breaking this lot up. Sure. This is, that's my my main point. This is a lot that I'm guessing you know, barring the Walt Disney Company or, again, an archive of some sort looking to have these all, I am guessing there is going to be a lot of action on this lot in particular because I do think certainly if you can get it for a price, they can be broken up individually. Hell, you could probably pay to get Dick Van Dyke to autograph some of them. I mean, there's a yeah. there's a move here financially, I guess, is what I... Or just spread them of... out on the floor and he could dance on them. Exactly. Um, but anyway, it, was, it, it, it did occur to me that just uh, if you are bidding on this, just be thinking about that, that you're... There's Have a, that in mind. There's yeah. a number that people are going to be chasing it at to a point where, you know, they're going to be dividing the number by... 67 in my guess you know what i mean and it it, do, it does start to add up i will unfortunately say so i think there's going to be a excuse me a lot of competition on this action one on i think this. yeah, yeah a lot sure. of action i think a lot of bidding action not a bad thing but just unfortunately it did occur to me um my next one is 233 which is Go for one it. that uh, i'm guessing most people will shoot by but i will explain it lot 233 uh is natalie wood's uh, Harvard Lampoon Worst Actress Award. Uh, no, she no, she didn't have a life preserver. Um, too soon. Uh, no, no, I don't know about too soon, but sad. Although we did a one of my all time favorite jokes. We've talked about this right on the show. We, one of my all time favorite jokes in the Curb season with the Seinfeld reunion when yeah. Larry's trying to convince Jerry to. Did we talk about this? No. No. Oh. Uh, Larry's trying to convince Jerry to do the reunion. And it's like, why should we do that? And it's like, you know, we did it, you know, and, and Larry's trying to convince him that it's sort of like, you know, getting back together. And he goes, it's like, 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 uh, uh, Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood got back together. <laughs> and, uh, and then Jerry goes, uh, and then, and then she, you know, and then she drowned. And then there's like this funny pause and they're like, what was Christopher Walken doing on that boat? Uh, anyway, I just, one of my absolute favorite things that uh, I definitely remember sort of pitching That's Larry and Jerry and getting in. Um, so anyway, the, the <laughs> point of this is the, the, the Harvard Lampoon uh, created in 1876, which gave birth to the National Lampoon, uh, began this sort of idea of what they used to call the movie worst awards that would come out yearly. Uh, and in, I guess, 1967, they gave her the worst actress award for 66, 67, and I think 68, which was 
had not even occurred yet, I believe, is the, the gag <laughs> here. Uh, and she was both uh, – a good sport, but also smart enough to go to Cambridge, Massachusetts, to Harvard uh, and collect this award from uh, from the boys. Uh, I got my comedy start at the Harvard Lampoon. I started writing uh, at the Harvard Lampoon. The picture that you're seeing in there of Natalie Wood is in front of the Harvard Lampoon headquarters uh, of, of, of a building I used to have a key to. Uh, and uh, I would like to see this piece go back to the Lampoon. So uh, I'm hoping... Uh, I'm hoping uh, Very good. this will be purchased by them. So we'll I also got happens. my comedy yeah. start in college. I went to a very conservative Catholic university that had no sense of humor, so it forced me to <laughs> forced find, you to have one. Nice <laughs> find joy in the uh, in in the serious. Yes. Very, very good. Yes. Uh, I where are you going to call next? out oh. Glenn, Glenn Ford's pool table, Dave? I was really <laughs> hoping we could talk about that. I would just like I to enjoy, put that I enjoy in my condo, in but on its side. Yeah. Just like, just like not pool playing which is sort of like leaning up against a wall un unusable yeah and then every time somebody comes in there you just remind them please no drinks on the pool table please be careful that's glenn ford's pool table <laughs> uh it, it has a couple of polaroids it looks like or some shots of him playing. i love it uh, i yeah. love it and who and why but i just love it so that's two th lot two three five uh my next... i guess you can't really sell that on ebay i mean you really do need an auction uh, yeah so. i mean that is very 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 true and this is the best place to probably put it because of the attribution uh i'm at two two nine one just is my in next, some so in some <laughs> movie one day you just got to write like a line of like uh you know like, like he's very rich do you know this yes. is glenn ford's yes, pool ford. table <laughs> <laughs> that's your your like your tech billionaire his right. move that he makes yeah it's like the new bmw or the new rolls royce it's like right. you know, he drives a rolls royce but he has glenn ford's pool table yeah <laughs> Sorry, what number did you say? <laughs> two two nine one. I was just saying you probably have something before there. I do. I I, uh, okay. I yelled out two four zero eight nine two four zero okay. Redford's uh, bowler cap from uh, the Sundance as a Sundance kid from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance kid. I'm, I cruised right past that. I I missed that. That's very 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 cool. Really very neat cool. to me. Uh, I am not a hat guy, but this is such a unique hat that not only does it sort of jump out in the movie, but, you know, it jumps out to me as a prop. Like you just remember, you know, everybody yeah. else wearing, if you will, cowboy hats and regular hats and the, just his the sort of dandy side of the Sundance kid to wear this particular uh, bowler, if you will. Uh, so I, I was very intrigued by it. Yeah. And, and the uh, Providence yeah. on it goes back 20 years to a previous uh, Profiles in History uh, auction. So that's that's nice. And I guess it does say Mr. Redford on the uh, on the in, the inside in uh, very old ink at this point. So that's very cool. Um, Where are uh, you should next? I go to should I go to two nine one? As we're zipping by two six zero, there was an A team clapper. Uh, just because it's an A team yeah. clapper, I don't know. I'm not uh, I'm not staking my reputation on it, but it was it it did make me put a smile on my face. I love it when a plan say. comes yeah. together, Dave. Yeah, exactly, exactly. My plan to get an A team clapper <laughs> has finally come together. Uh, so I, I called that out. Uh, my next one's three two four. So you may go next. Okay. I, think. Yeah. I realize I'm also blowing past um, two seventy five, which is the um, the original painting of the Enterprise. The cover I, I piece, know, sure. Yeah, and I don't know what that is really and where it sits in the history. And, of course, I could have read the lot, but I didn't. But I, I don't know. Do you know anything about it? or should, I didn't. Is it it's just not a of... piece of art I was familiar with, but it is Matt Jeffries, you know, you know, the creator of the Enterprise, painting the Enterprise. Yeah. Um, it said that it was, you know, the only finished artwork that sort of basically exists. Um, it was a gift to a friend in the seventies. They don't know when it was created. It was used later for uh, the cover of, uh, of the book about him. So that was, that was sort of nice. I thought that was very cool. It's just not an image. I was not familiar with the book about his life and it's just not an image I was familiar with, but I, it's certainly, it's a show stopping piece. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a gorgeous piece. I, I, you know, personally, I guess I lean more towards a direct, direct connection to like painted for X. For the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or for Gene Roddenberry or it's, sure. a, you know, something course, in his course. office yeah. or something like that. Uh, we should also note we're in day two. It's a two day auction. We're now uh, on the July 26th uh day yep. and day two starts with star trek it starts with this yes. jeffrey's piece starts with a uh for lot 276 a gorgeous uh 
Deep Space Nine Enterprise miniature with working yeah, lights very, and engines. That's cool. really, really cool. I mean, yes, it's from the TV show, but who cares? I mean, it's an Enterprise. St- I don't know what else to enterprise. say. Yeah, exactly. And look, that, I mean, that episode was very good in Deep Space Nine. That was a great Nine, episode. So. Yes, yes, yes. In Deep Space Nine, it's a beloved agree. series. So I don't. I mean, it's not the it's not the sixties Enterprise, but it, it's damn cool. Uh, my first uh, that I actually did call out is two nine one, which is Bob Peake's final movie poster artwork for Voyage Home. And damn, is this thing beautiful! And it's the C- San Francisco cityscape. It's the Klingon bird of prey. Uh, great uh, um, uh, sort of circle of heads of uh, all the crew of the Enterprise, uh, Shatner and and Nimoy at the center of it, and you, you see Bones and Sulu and Chekhov. And yeah, Uhura really and wonderful Scotty. Bob Peak, the sort of at the same time both very evocative and almost impressionistic, and yet at the same time very illustrative and very like great likenesses. It just it's got a lot it's I don't know, it really Bob Peak, just really strong Bob Peak piece. It's incredibly in tight yeah. too, which I just love. And it's huge. It's huge. It's 40 by almost 60. It's enormous. <laughs> uh uh yeah, and and framed, it's even larger. I I love I I love the piece. I just think it's great. And I I I know you have qualms about this movie, right? But this was always my no, favorite. I this like is the one I watched so many I times still like as a kid. This one a lot. It, I mean, again, they all you know at the end of the day, and I don't think you disagree with this. They they all pale a little bit to you know compared to two. To but Con, I am yeah. to Con. But I am a still a pretty big fan of three and four and six too. So I'm not uh, I'm not questioning this one. I. Uh, I, yeah. I do enjoy it, uh, you know, Nick Meyer and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. If that really was the cool. con art, I think you and I would be no, no, a bit I mean, of a rock, yeah, paper, scissors, sort of Rochambeau. A, lots of it. problems in that. But, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, really, really cool. And really cool as a Star Trek piece, but also really cool. As, I mean, it ex- this piece exists on three levels to me because it's a great Star Trek piece. It's also a great just movie poster, original art piece in general. And it's an incredible piece of Bob Peak art. So I think those three things are sort of colliding together here in a good in a good way uh yeah you know i did like for whatever it's worth the lot before not quite perhaps as significant but it's a voyage home uh piece of concept art yes of uh it looks i guess it's uh starfleet uh in the future in and in, in san francisco as mm-hmm. opposed to when they uh are in san francisco in the past but uh you know with shuttles flying around and whatnot golden and gate bridge golden yeah. gate bridge and a, a nice mix of sort of the uh the past and the futuristic present yes. of Star Trek. And the arts so, by Chris yeah. Evans before he became Captain America. So. Before he became Captain America, yes. Um, but I thought that was that was very nice, too. There's a couple of phaser lots that I definitely want to check out. I did just did not get a chance to, like, look at them close enough. There's one from uh, 6 and one from Star Trek 3. So yeah. There's at least two lots that I'll be sort of just checking out. Again, as always, do your research. You know, look at, look at these pieces you know, do screen grabs. Uh, they appear in the movie. So if, if something's right, great. If something's wrong, that there's a reason maybe something's wrong. So as always, do your research. But I have not done my research yet, and I want to be really clear about that. But I plan on it because both those lots are interesting. Um, are you? Do you care about nine one? Uh, sorry, three one three or no? Because it's a movie, not a show. About Picard. Uh, uh, no. Sorry. Yes, the the uh, Captain Picard. Uh, First contact uniform. It's very cool, but no, I don't care. It's not. It's not the TV show. I think this is the best of the movies, but th- those movies are really pretty wobbly for me. Um, the the next gen movies, I just uh, I struggle no, with them. Fair. And I think this this movie is good, but know, even I even know this where is kind of con line. I'm sorry, your con, your Picard line was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Where yeah, your it's, line this is was. this yeah. is not this is not it. Um, which ironically with the 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 Kirk series it flips the other way for me I'd rather have the movie stuff because that's what I but it's what I grew up with I didn't grow mm-hmm, up with the TV mm-hmm. series so um and and I saw all these movies in the theater I just I have that I have that connection with the um uh with the TV series in particular so this is not for me but uh it's very cool and I think this is everybody would probably agree this is the best of the next gen movies first contact Gotcha. Is that the one with uh, Zephram Cochran? Yes. Is that that one? Yes. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. With uh, James Cromwell um, and the Borg. Uh, yep. Just yeah, yeah. It's a good. It's a good one. Uh, um, three two four was one I called out. Okay. Uh, for a variety a of reasons, an- another miniature. This is a uh, a miniature Excelsior 
uh, from the this Star Trek Voyager cool. flashback episode. I always liked the Excelsior design with yes. that sort of extra big hull, but also that this was uh, built by Greg Jean. So That's I thought that Jean was built. extra cool. Uh, I, I just really did like it. And again, you know, the opportunity to get a, uh, a Star Trek ship miniature uh, even from a show, not necessarily from a movie. Uh, I still studio thought it was scale really cool. used built by Greg Jean. Great opening bid, I think, for what it is. Yeah, forty uh, k opening bid. Um, that will certainly go higher. And, this, but... and I yes, technically not the Enterprise, but certainly uh, I guess the Enterprise. The Excelsior is the second most famous ship in the series. And doesn't the doesn't the future Enterprise be like doesn't like whatever the Excelsior is kind of become an Enterprise later? I can't even remember. Like, doesn't that design kind of supersede, or maybe I'm. I don't, maybe I'm I don't think this so. Up. Oh, okay. I don't think so. But uh, uh, Sulu becomes the captain, the captain of the Excelsior. Yes, exactly. And yeah. his first mate is. Uh, oh what's my. His, name? his first mate was. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, Heather's uh, Christian uh, 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 Slater. Uh, Christian Slater. Captain, greetings and salutations. <laughs> it's very my, good. It's my very good Slater Nicholson. Did I tell you my Christian Slater story? No. Did you meet him for something? I did. We um we I was making colony around the time that Mr. Robot blew up and became oh, right. a of sensation. Yeah, yeah. So we were that, always yeah. riding on their their draft in the uh, Comic Con and the press cycle and all that because they would, they would always uh, uh, come out before us and have much much more press than we did. Uh, but we walked around when when you're at Comic Con together, and I he was an incredibly normal uh, guy, and I just really you know got on t talking with him and my this has become my way in i always i always try to find, just try to find the most obscure project to talk to people about the last thing christian slater wants to talk about is probably i don't know heathers what I mean, what would you say i don't know it was heathers big for him i mean it was huge i mean put him on the map yeah so i didn't i did not talk to him about being uh in star trek although i would love to hear that story so i, I pulled out um name of the rose because that the rose, was his yeah sure very very that, first yeah. and he had lots lots of uh, great things to say about that and I remember he was wearing Darth Vader Adidas because um, because his kid was super into Star Wars and was really mad at him for never being in a Star Wars movie. So he was like, I'm trying to show my kid I'm cool by going being at Comic-Con to like promote something and I'm wearing Darth Vader sneakers. And I, I just enjoyed that. He was a big, I think, Star Trek fan. I think he asked to be in that. If memory serves, that, that totally makes sense because otherwise, I don't know what's going on. Someone, there. maybe his mother was the casting director or something. I feel like the name Slater oh, wow. was. Maybe that was the connection. I, it's been too long, but that was definitely he was a fan. Uh, he used to, in my day, in the SNL days, uh, and again, forgive me if I've told this story. We did a sketch once. It was very funny. It was, uh, I think, it was the Chris Elliott year. So that would have been 94, 95. It was like a celebrity auction. And so it's sort of connected to props and memorabilia, if you will. So it was a celebrity auction. The two guys were kind of shifty. It was Chris Elliott and maybe McKeon was the other guy. I don't remember who the other guy was, but definitely Chris Elliott was one of them. And the objects they start to increasingly be very clear that they've been stolen from the celebrities' houses. <laughs> and so like the lots will be like, here's so and so, here's a, uh, you know i'm making this up i can't remember which celebrities we did but it was like it was like jane fonda's like bedroom slippers jane fonda the book that she keeps like on her bureau when she sleeps and her reading glasses this is a polaroid of jane fonda waking up in the middle of the night very frightened and it was just it got sillier and sillier but it was very clear everything was stolen uh and it ends with a whole bunch of christian slater stuff and then slater popped on uh, and at, like sort of demanded his stuff back, and he oh, uh, he came and got it. So yeah, that was very fun, but a, a good sketch. I don't know if it's online anywhere. Maybe we'll try and find it. But yeah, sorry, uh, nice little stroll down memory lane. Uh, I'm three three six next. Uh, oh, I'm four lots after you. So go ahead. Oh, very exciting. I so I preface this with this is three three six. Godfather extensive publicity campaign archive from world market worldwide marketing head Charles Glenn. I, I just want to see this lot. It's that simple. I don't, you know, there's lots of descriptions of different, you know, memos and things and whatnot. That's I cool. just, I'm dying to see what's in here. What else, you know, what's in there, what these different memos have to say. I don't know. It's not, it's certainly priced unaggressively at $500. We can't this film around Pacino. Yeah. Uh, that he's a midget. Um, I, I'm just very curious. I'd like to see what's in this lot. I'm very curious. This could just be a fun pickup. So, you know, yeah. there's just not a lot of Godfather stuff. So that one's, uh, I, 
yeah, jumped out at me. I'm also a paperwork lot, uh, 340. Uh, it's an American graffiti script signed by yep. Lucas and Kurtz, and it's got a bunch of ephemera from the movie. There's just not much around from uh, American graffiti at all. I love this movie. Um, it just had its 50th anniversary. This is just very cool and a very, very low opening bid. This will this will rise from here, but um, but man, it's, it's cool. And it sounds like... Uh, uh, the hikes and that, that's how you say their name, yep. right? And Gloria Katz, and then a couple of the cast. The hike, yeah, some of the uh, cast, and then a bunch of looks like really interesting, like a pin and some tickets and stuff. Yeah, really, really cool. A couple of years ago, I believe it was. I think it was. It wasn't Heritage, but I think it was the Joe's original incarnation of Heritage. Uh, at Profiles, I think it was. There was some stuff from cats and yuck they were selling some things from their collection so there was a variety of like signed things like old paperbacks and things uh that i thought were interesting but this one's got the cast on it too i know i just thought this was really great so it's, yeah, it's this great it's really neat yeah and and then i go immediately to the next lot the next uh, one, three yeah, three sure. four one damn this is awesome and it's the it's the sting original movie poster artwork by charles mall and this is so this is not the poster that i always think of i think of the amsel art poster obviously i do think of the amsel as well but the second you as one say this the second you google this was i don't know if they called it the b poster but this poster was used this was yeah you see yeah, you yeah. see this art this is you a known image yeah. yes exactly uh, and um, charles mull not a name i know but uh no I guess, uh, but yeah. i mean the art is beautiful the likenesses are incredible um uh and uh i just i this is this is awesome <laughs> It's awesome, yeah. And uh, there's some great really, original movie, really movie poster yeah. artwork in this uh, in this auction here. He really captured not only the likenesses, but I think he really did a great job with like sort of the characterizations in the movie. The way uh, Redford sort of Hooker is like, look at the money I got here, yeah. and obviously Gondorf Newman is a little sort of playing cooler. A little cooler, about. I've been yeah. here before, and uh, Dora Lonigan just damn scary robert shaw just looking really frightening and just uh and a nice yeah. period feel to the entire thing yes so, yeah yes yeah, so it has like I, a um, nice art deco feel to it yeah i uh it yeah i it really uh it really uh hit, hit me uh which will take us to the next piece of poster art uh eight nine three four seven i figured you'd call that yeah. one out yeah this one is uh, a star wars is this one that like is this one that like sticks out in your brain as like, oh, yes I remember and no. That I'm going to be very okay. honest. This is by Michelangelo Papuza, who was the Italian artist. Michelangelo. Um, he uh, did a lot of the Italian poster art for Star Wars. And I think we've talked about this before on the show, but Lucas was very good about for this, his international campaigns, wanting artists from different countries to do the art for their own country. Often, right. if even though it was different imagery later on, he often had people sort of recreating the American imagery just by local artists, which was less interesting to me. But uh, Papuza, I, mean, I think that's how you pronounce it, did a series of pieces. I think there's like five or six of them. This is not the one that is used on the poster. The one that he used on the poster is sort of there's no other way of saying this kind of a sexier chestier princess leia it's a very it's very italian in a very funny way um when we were doing euro trip uh we were doing a lot of international casting and at some point we were trying to cast mika the german girl but we read a couple of italian actresses and these all sound like stereotypes but we all the italian actresses just went crazy Italian and just played every scene like ridiculously sexy. And like even stuff like it was like, what are you doing here? And it was just always very <laughs> like ridiculously sexy. And it was just like, no, this is not right. And you, of course you couldn't really give them notes. They were, it was all on tape from half a world away. But anyway, um, a couple of these have come up before, never the art for the uh, original, uh, for the actual poster, but I believe this was used on the novelization. Uh, I, I don't know if they have a picture of it. Yeah, there's a picture of it. I believe that's the novelization uh, in the corner there. Uh, and it's just uh, it's just really gorgeous oh, okay. work. Yeah, um, really just detailed, pretty piece. And while I don't, like, like I said, I, don't, I didn't specifically remember the novelization here. 
I do remember the style of this guy's art from the Italian poster. And so, you know, in a world where I don't think I'm getting that anytime soon, this is, this is pretty darn cool. So that's, I guess, that's yeah, my, it's end, cool. my it's end cool. is thought. This, is, is this for cool. you? Uh, I'm definitely going to watch it. I'm definitely going to okay. watch it. Yeah. I mean, there's no other way of saying that. Uh, which brings us to the, uh, not the cover piece, oddly. Uh, maybe oddly, that's a, yeah. a separate discussion. I figured we'd just blow right on past this, Dave. It'd be funny if we just went right to like, now yeah. number 418. So, um, there's the Y-Wing, and then on we go. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not really quite sure what to say here, uh, obviously. Uh, this is incredible. Yeah. This is incredible. It's fucking incredible. And Let's in go one step further. Yeah. In an alternate reality, you would be Gaga. Oh, and in a, in a reality where the, I mean, just, you know, undo the last year in a reality of no X-Wing, but certainly having missed out on the pyro X-Wing, I'm all over this. I mean, uh, and in a reality of none of those showing up, I'm all over this. Mm -hmm. But also, let me go another step further. In a reality of all of that happened, I'm all over this. Okay. I, mean, I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, this is going to require further, deeper, larger discussion it's a little bit different. Obviously you're in a different world where you have a miniature, obviously, but I just think it's fucking incredible. And I, I've always loved the, I, I, I do love the Y wing. I'm not sure. Here's a, a very strange star Warsian thing to say, you know, certainly in a world, if I didn't have anything, I would happily take a Y wing in a world where I could choose. I'm always going to choose the X wing over the Y wing. I mean, that's just sure. right. You know, that's that is my opinion is the X-Wing is sort of, you know, the first among the animals. You know what I mean? All animals are created equal, but some are more equal than others. And I think the X-Wing will always be number one. But the Y-Wing is incredible. And it's also particularly incredible because in the early versions and a lot of the early uh, paintings by Macquarie and stuff, the Y wing was far more prominent. Uh, it looked like yes. the Y wing was going to be the main ship, if you will. And I don't know why. Actually, I, I honestly don't know why they made the switch. I don't know if it was the the X wing's opening that was somehow more dramatic, if that was part of it or whatnot. But you know, in a lot of the early paintings, the Y wing is more prominent, like making runs on the Death Star and whatnot by Macquarie. Um, and then the X-Wing becomes the bigger ship. But, uh, I, I mean, this is fantastic. I, I think there is no doubt that this is, you know, the sister to the X-Wing and probably to both of those X-Wings, uh, you know, probably originally from Lucasfilm, you know, rightly or wrongly. Uh, and it's just incredible. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's It's just really gorgeous. It's glorious. Uh, so this yeah. is the gold leader screen match. It's screen never matched. seen the light yep. of day. Uh, why it's never been on display anywhere. It's never been seen since the filming. It's this is incredible. Very yeah, it important. It is. It is just a little slice of perfect. Uh, it's just really fantastic. And there's a thing it says it would like to be displayed next to the x-wing i don't know what that means but that's what it oh. says oh yeah. interesting yeah so that's kind of cool that was its uh its wishes i guess <laughs> uh it's, it's 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 last wishes it's like um, a yeah. it's like a husband and wife that that want to be entombed next to one another right in all eternity uh, mm -hmm. i would like to be entombed with becky but sooner than later because i just just sort of can't take this heat she, ironically I can't take she this might heat. entomb <laughs> you with your x-wing and y-wing very possible first. very yes. uh I, it would be fun. I, we've never talked about this. I know we've talked about getting rid of stuff and like our kids like having auctions, but there is something to be said for a Pharaoh style burying with where your stuff. Yeah. I die. Becky buries me with all the stuff and then puts out clues to where I might be buried. <laughs> and whoever, whoever, like a civil war treasure, yeah, whoever finds my, uh, whoever finds my, uh, who can yeah. solve the map and like all of the traps that she sets can have the collection what do you think <laughs> yeah i i did i, I dug for th uh, three hours today and i just pulled up this mandalorian helmet <laughs> um not included among the treasures of the Dave Mandel I, i've told yeah. caitlin m multiple times that i want to i want to go clutching my conan sword to my chest like a viking king being sent into the afterlife with protection you know and uh she just says she says over my dead body you can have a replica that's what she always says 
if I, I think go it kind of I think it kind of goes like this: you die, yeah, and we check the most recent heritage sale for a uh, Conan sword, <laughs> and if it's like only going higher, you get the replica. And if it turns out that like, you know, whatever, in 40 years, when or 50 years, when you die, people are over Conan, like Conan is just done. They've made like 18 more Conans and nobody <laughs> gives a fuck. And like Conan swords are like selling for like $200. It's like, yeah, yeah. okay, he can be buried with it. Yeah. 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 Conan is Zac Efron now. He's the, that's how everybody. <laughs> Zac Efron Jr. Zac Efron sees Jr. Their, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Sees their Conan. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet is Conan. Is. <laughs> Very hey. Good. Talk of doom. Yeah. Um, uh, this thing is insane. Uh, there is it's probably great. a larger discussion to be had. Uh, oh, Dave, you have so many choices to make this summer, my friend. I know. This is a bad one, though. This is a really bad one. This is this is incredible. I I am blown away by it. Just the it is. It's yeah. I, there's I mean, also if not something... for the X-Wing, it'd be the greatest Star Wars piece no, exactly. to come to the market. But and... I will also say this. I, I, I cannot believe I am sort of, you know, I know we were just joking about like being buried with stuff, but it, it there's a, such a funny perspective, like almost an out of body perspective that I have right now, which is having waited so long to get to try and get a Star Wars miniature, you know, an original Star Wars movie. And by Star Wars, I was open to all three of the films. You know what I mean? It wasn't just right. like it has to be Star Wars. I would have, you know, th th there were ships I was open to from all three movies. Um and the impossibility of that and like how crazy it was and how rare it was and just the, the, the boom, boom, boom. It's like that old uh, Mike Tyson knockout game, body blow, body blow, yeah. body blow, you know, of just pyro uh, hero X wing hero Y wing in two years. It's just, yeah. it's just insane from a, just a prop collecting standpoint. I can't think of a, I can't think of three pieces from any movie that have come out that have just been so, I don't know, high end from like three in a row like that. I mean, obviously things from other movies have petered out, but just the, the boom, 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 each one begetting the next one, obviously clearly the pyro. Well, I guess Greg's death. So I'm not sure the pyro did, but certainly the numbers on those two are leading to this one. Yeah. And, for sure, uh, for yeah. Sure. And my guess is somewhere in there at some point, Greg owned this one. There's no way. That's I, largely I think it due was, to you, Dave. Yeah. Yes. So there you go. I, uh, uh, well, you can you know. thank yourself for this one. I can thank myself. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, high class problems, but boy, really, really cool. So I don't know. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Much discussion to be had. Yes, uh, eager to yeah. see how yeah. how this develops for you. What can um, I sell my bounty law mug for <laughs> to pay the down? Payment? I mean, I pay good yeah. money for that bounty law mug, Dave. Hmm. Um, I, I laughed at eight, nine, three, five, zero. I'm just calling it out for a quick second. This very funny, uh, gag petition to fire or rehire, I guess, Carrie Fisher. I can only assume this is cocaine related in its own funny way, <laughs> but, uh, who knows? But yeah, it, I did laugh. Uh, it, yes, I, this is very... just a little touch of, uh, film, uh, film set humor, I guess is what I would call it, which, uh, for anyone who has been on a film set knows, the bar is very low. Uh, yeah. 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 Gag reels are gag reels. So, yeah. Indeedy. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm Where three, next? seven, six is my next one. Three, seven, six. Uh, I am shocked. I'll simply say shocked to see a uh, Mandalorian helmet in here. I'm curious about it, uh, but I know nothing. And how that's possible, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but... You said three, seven, six. Uh, yes. I think I have... Oh, real quick before that. I'm sorry. Uh, three, six, four. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, uh, three, six, four. Uh, I have been waiting for one of these for a really long time. It is a, uh, hold on, let me get to it. It is a 9.2 graded sealed uh, slip case. Uh, no, I'm fucking kidding. I, I hate these. I'm sorry. The, the VHS I collecting. hate these VHS graded VHS things so much. So I, I, I understand you can grade anything in the world. 
this is not for me. And look, uh, I yeah. think collecting the way, VHS is good cool. for you. Good for whoever wants it. Not for me. I leave. It I mean, that. I yeah. think I think a shelf in your office of a bunch of old beat up VHS thing sleeves is cool. That is cool. It's not uncool to collect VHS. This idea that we have to grade them and and cr create an economy of these things that everybody had. It's just it's so it's stupid. I it's not my favorite so. thing in the world. So anyway, that's yeah. Moving on. <laughs> So uh, 89376, uh, that we've talked about this before. We had a whole episode about it. Oh, we, don't gosh, need yes. to, we don't need to belabor, but it's finally here. The John Alvin uh, final poster comprehensive uh, for Blade Runner, uh, the last piece before the final final. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's important. It's part of the history of this film. And I still don't know whether I need it or not. Um <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I, I love, see, I love seeing it here. Um, you can see we talked about this earlier, Dave. It's actually in the PDF catalog. I didn't, I didn't see it online, but I was tipped yeah, I, off. Yeah, I had not noticed it. I flew right by it, but it, it, I did think that was an extra, an extra plus, as they say. Yeah, the, it is the, uh, it is the art for the cover, oddly, of the Criterion Collection laser disc. So they use the the comprehensive artwork. I guess at that point they couldn't get their hands on the um, the original anymore. At that point, uh, because it had disappeared uh, into somebody's collection, hopefully somewhere. Uh, so it actually is the printed illustrated cover for the the famous Criterion laser disc of the. Um, uh, I guess that's the director's cut, right? Because that's what brought on that whole uh, wave of new interest in Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, and the, it, look, it's a hugely important piece. Uh, I have the pencil uh, prelim. I'm looking right at it. I love it. Uh, the art is a little tighter on it, which is, I think, is the reason that I, I gravitate so much yeah, to I it. Yeah, I think, you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, on that episode. I don't know if it was because it was a prelim and obviously everyone assumed that they knew he could do the likeness and he was really just kind of showing the, uh, the layout, I guess, if you will, really like sort of more about the layout of it. And I think it's a mix of, because he was like being a little less detailed, but also being a little less detailed with an airbrush that it just ends up yes. being, I, I hate to say extra less detailed, but do you know what I mean? I think there's yeah. a, there's a, it is the airbrush, the thing. airbrush blur, the air blur, the airbrush simplicity that oversimplifies the piece a little bit. Whereas in pencil form, he was forced to put more lines down, which is why your, your pencil just is tighter. It just is by definition. Yeah. It's a gorgeous layout. It's a very memorable piece. Sometimes I think his face is better than hers. Sometimes I think her face is better yeah. than his. I go back and forth. I love the bottom part of it. I love the smoke. The city, I love the, the light, but I love the spinner and the city part of it extra yeah. a lot, wherever that fits in. Yes. And that's very different yeah. from mine. Cause that, that's the, that's the part of this, this image that evolved a lot between the pencil and here, uh, where you got the Terrell building uh, or the police station, I guess, in the, um, uh, in the, uh, in the shot. I don't know, Dave. I mean, I'll monitor it. The, it's opening bid is 25 K. There's already a bid on it. I saw online, so um we sh we shall see but um but i do like that i have mine and uh, at the i mean there's least, at the end of the day i will have you, one right you have one um and it's not exactly i mean not that this matters or doesn't matter you're not you're not trying to get to the final i mean obviously you would love the final one but it's not yes. like you have the final and you're going i want all the various prelims whatever you have is what you will have in a this will be the end way. of the road yes, either exactly. way yeah, yeah right, probably right. so right um it's, it's, it's gorgeous. I think it's a, here's my guess. And again, I think we can talk about when we get to the live show, I think we'll, we'll be able to sort of land a little more of what we're going after. Um, uh, I, I feel like it's a number question. I think you pick a number and by the mm -hmm. way, maybe the number already has been hit. Maybe your number was 25, but I'll make up a number for a second, which is, let's say you're just like, I'll chase this to 30. You chase and you, you end wherever that number is. And you just walk away with your, you know, your head held high. I think, yeah. I think there's a question of what the number is that you would go. I would, if I got it for X, I would be a happy guy. And more than that, I don't know if I need it because of what you already have now is that going to be lower than somebody else's number because they don't have the piece you have well that is certainly possible it's blade runner you know what i mean but i do feel like 
I think it's worth figuring out a number and chasing it at least to that. That's my own yeah, okay. sense of it. But okay. but again, you have to figure out what that number is for yourself and obviously what else there is. But I do think it's really interesting and really special. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the, the Alvin folks about that uh, piece. Sorry, we're jumping all around, but there was that uh, uh, Blazing Saddles uh, Alvin poster art that showed up in a Bonhams auction. I uh, unfortunately missed yeah. out on it. I got my dates confused, which is, uh, boy, that's never going to happen again. But I was annoyed. I thought it was July 24th and 25th. No, that's a joke. Um, but, uh, but no, I did miss it. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was a Wednesday and it was a Tuesday. Yeah. And it's just one of those things that happened. Speaking He's, of, here's my new John Alvin piece. Uh, it went for a very reasonable number, but I was certainly very curious that they, that, did they try and stop it? Or was it from mm. them or what, where did it come mm. from? Was it from Mel Brooks so that they, I, I, I don't know, but I was definitely very curious. Uh, and I wonder if we can find that answer out because uh, it's a gorgeous piece, but boy, talk about one of his finished pieces that they didn't have, I guess is where I'm, where I'm sure. really going with the story. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, like I said, I do think it's special, but you have a great piece there. Then again, I think the Y wing is special and I have a great piece. So this is our, Indeedy. this is our problem. Dare I say, um, uh, Conan, the destroyer, uh, always nice to see, I guess, uh, is it? you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't hate the movie, but, uh, but I'm at three, eight, four, another piece of uh, poster art. Yep. This is a temple of doom. Uh, indie I did not poster recognize art. this one, but I understand this is a big deal amongst the Brits. They all yes, recognize I, this. I recognize yeah. it and thought it was really great and assume that somebody who it means more to might, you know, go higher. But I did think it was just really, really nice. I love the sort of the, you know, the, the indie with the full sort of tableau around him. I thought that was just really, yes, it's uh, a, it's a, it's a very yeah. cool piece. I did not recognize it. I didn't have a sense memory of it, but I was actually talking to a UK collector out here that freaked out when he saw this, which surprised yeah, me because it was imagine. an Australian piece, but I guess they knew it. So I think the, the UK Australian connection is strong. Uh, very but strong. Yeah. Really yeah. just a really gorgeous piece of uh, film art by uh Mike Vaughn, uh, not again, not a name I knew, but really, really nice and really just captured to me that sort of uh, Sunday serial adventure kind of a thing. I just yes, thought it did yes, really it well. has that. Yeah, it has that kind of like '30s lithograph um, feel to it to me, uh, yeah. like post lith lithograph poster art feel. Really, really fun. Um, Three nine two. Uh, this is. Uh, this is uh, Blaine, Jesse Ventura's uh, partial stunt <laughs> minigun. This has shown up Old before. Painless. Yep, we've seen this piece previously in some auction somewhere once before at least. Uh, I love Predator. There's very little from it. It's not much that like has ever sort of shown itself that I've been able to get a hold of. Uh, this gun is very memorable. I know it is not complete. It is admitting as such. But uh, boy, I, it's a it's it's a great, uh, you know, it's very cool. Just, it's an evocative piece of that movie as far as I'm concerned. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, I smiled at all the home alone stuff. It made me, no one ever got a hold of me with those bricks and paint cans. I guess whoever yep. got them just wanted them. I, all. I also yeah. smiled, uh, three nine nine in particular. I think that's the, that's the one, um, which one is that the sled or what? Oh no, that uh, has complete yes. costume. The costume. Yeah. yeah. That very and they've got that costume. still with the hairdryer. Yeah. Too bad. Then yeah. uh, you could probably get like a, I bet you could get like a camo, you know, do a repro gun or something with the camera yeah. just to put it on. No yellow t-shirt under there though. I did notice that, which yeah. would have been extra yeah, yeah. cool. Um, but, uh, kind of just, you know, it's, it's just funny Fun. that the, this stuff is showing up now. I feel like the, the uh the home alone stuff is begetting these home alone pieces uh i got a kick out of 405 and 406 from uh this is the 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 brom stroker's uh dracula this is the uh gary oldman the overcoat and the really beautiful uh yeah walking cane with the dragon head the dragon no cane. top hat sadly uh mm. no sunglasses i feel like we've seen the sunglasses previously in another i think those auction. have been around yeah yes I don't know if there's ever been a top hat. I don't know if that's something you could put together. I do think the 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 cane works alone. I think the cane with the jacket works extra good, but it cries. I would then really want to try and find a top hat if it was humanly possible. But I did think it was or just really cool. And that movie seems to be, I don't know if it's connected to the sort of the Coppola sort of, uh, 
Megaopolis coming out or something, but seems to be having another moment. A little bit of a moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are re-remembering that it was a good one. So uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, What else? I'm at 413 and 414. I just wanted to call these out because I think these are beautiful little set pieces from Nightmare. I literally went right by them. I apologize. Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, very recognizable um, set pieces, not stop motion art, but that probably means they're probably a little bit more stable and uh, yes. easier to take care of, which <laughs> would be a plus. And so it's so Tim Burton, particularly uh, four thirteen. Um, I just think that that's, I mean, that's a little, that's a Tim Burton, that's a a a Tim Burton fever dream right there. That I think yeah, uh, would these look sort of nice whatever scientists case. with like working out of the giant brain or yeah. the giant skull. Yeah. Very, yes. Very you know, cool. you're a mad scientist when your building is you. <laughs> It's just, a, a, it's a fair point. It's just, very, very fair it's just point. an yeah. effigy of you. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me while I go up into my own brain. Uh, <laughs> into my, I'll into be, my, my head. Yes. I will be right back. Uh, I did speaking of stop motion puppets, four, two, nine, the James and the giant peach stop motion puppets. Yep. Just beautiful. I always liked that version. I always liked that book, uh, roll doll. And, uh, I thought these were very pretty and, just kind of need to sort of an all in one lot, uh, maybe because it's maybe a little less popular than a nightmare, but, uh, I always, I always, but very, yeah. very cool. And my, my kids actually really loved this one. I put this on for them, but man, does that movie need a, uh, restoration update? It looks like somebody oh, just quickly scanned the film, oh, including funny. with all like I have, the cigarette burn-ins. I will be on, the first on, to tell you, I have not, Plus. not seen it since the theater, basically, but uh, I have a fond memory of it. Yeah. Somebody, Help out, James, and, yeah. and the Giant Peach, please. We'll start or just Kickstarter. help the peach, if nothing else. You don't have to True. help James. Just Do it for the peaches. The, do it for the peach. Come on. Um, what's next? Uh, that was you? all I wrote, Dave. That was all I had. There was one little thing that I would call out at the very end just to have something at the end. Um, um, I just was going to say, in, starting in 447, we've got the Joe Joey Pants Pantaleono yeah. collection. Yeah. Uh, I was very sad that there was nothing from risky business for him as uh, Guido, the killer pimp. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. The matrix stuff is all very cool. Very cool. But God damn. I wanted a, uh, I want, I was hoping that somehow he had kept like the egg from risky business or something, you know, from the end yeah. when he throws it to Joel, uh, all really cool. You know, he was on the Soprano. So he's got a bunch of cast sign stuff, which is very fun and all of that. And his chair back and autographed posters and stuff. Um, I didn't remember him in Daredevil, but he's in Daredevil. Uh, so he's got some Daredevil stuff. But anyway, a, a cool, again, not enough for its own auction, but a nice mini collection within this uh, within yes. this auction. Um, what else? I'm trying to think if I had anything else. Um, there. Oh, I'm going. I'm going to call this out. Uh, this is four nine four eight four. Uh, this is a really nice pair of uh, X Men United uh, Jackman claws. Um, uh, I will not lie; these are in uh, from me, although they technically did belong to a friend of mine. But these are in from me. But they're really oh, okay. his. Uh, uh, he's getting something from me, so I, I hope they do well. I I didn't really have. Um, oh, you called it the Wolverine claws. Yeah, um, that's those very cool. Uh, and the good the good X Men film, which is nice. X two, um, the good X Men film. These come with a letterhead from uh, Gary Jensen, the stunt coordinator. Stunt coordinator. Uh, they're really nice. They're stamped, you know, H J and one Hugh Jack and one. It's a really really nice set. This uh, auction has some of it the seems bone to indicate cl- use as well. Yeah, the bone. It has a set of the bone claws, which is not my favorite version of Wolverine, and it has the F X nubs, which are cool. But this is a great set of x claws uh if you've ever been looking for one yeah and obviously uh we've got wolverine uh deadpool coming out basically yeah which is going to be the the weekend of of this auction so yeah yeah. it's going to make a gabillion dollars wherever (laughs) that fits into your your calculus yeah sorry uh what else were you going to say i'm sorry there was a lot of marvel stuff Uh, i yeah yeah, your favorite thor 2 hammer yeah thor 2 hammers Look, I, I mean, look, I, I just don't know. Uh, this is for me. It's all gorgeous. Yeah. It's all gorgeous stuff. I just, you know, knowing knowing what we know. There there was one thing that I just wanted to call out in here because I think it's very cool. I I don't 
I liked the movie fine. It's not it's not something for me. It's just this is the key prop from the movie. It's uh, five three three, the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Hero Walkman mixtape and headphones. And I would just say, does this match? And it and it should if it if it's what it should be, it should match, right? There should be something to match on here uh, with all of this. What's going on? And this to me, like. Guardians with the great, there's great science fiction props and blasters right. and helmets and all like that. You just like the thing from the 80s. But this is the prop, right? right? No, this I agree. Is sort of it's the his thing soul. That yeah, it's, exactly. It's his yeah. story. And I just think, and it's so, and that soundtrack is so key to that film. I just think this is the thing, like, you know, sleuths, this is, this is the one. Go, it's not listed as matched. Go in there, get, get your 4K copy and try yeah, to find this, this thing in the film. This is just a giant section for me of do your research. I don't know anything. Yes. I, I am. I, it's, it's maybe all real. It's great. Wonderful. Just do your research. That's all I can possibly say. If things don't match, there's a reason they don't match. Not, oh, I bet it's okay anyway. And I leave it at that. Uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, more and more, uh, especially with uh, the, the the Marvel and some of this "quote unquote" newer Star Wars stuff, it's got to match. It's just got to match. Uh, Agreed. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the the best I can say. Um, funny that so much of, I mean, again, obviously taking a, not counting the uh, the Y wing certainly, but uh, some really great movie poster pieces, original movie poster yeah. art, yeah, in uh, on the on in this auction and all those incredible Oscars from the front end. Um, I got a lot to think about. Uh, I am, uh, I have some things to think about. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that there's anything that, um, I'm dire for in this auction. I mean, I would love that Y wing, you know, you and I talked about this a bit offline and I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on getting, uh, a, a plus pieces only kind of that, that is my, my tar, I just have so much great stuff. I want to, I want to, I want to improve what I have. Or if there's a hole in a collection, get, fill get it, something yeah. that's, yeah, fill it, but fill it with something great. I just don't, I don't, I don't see the nickel and diming. Sure. Um, I'd rather wait, wait along. And this, this well, one me, t- fits, fits all those. Let me fits ask all you those the really bills. big question. What in your collection right now, whose pool table do you have? Like who, whose pool table do you have in your collection? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, uh, who is it? Was it Dick Sargent or Dick York? The, with the second, uh, the second genie. Darren. Yeah. So Glenn right. Ford's pool table, personal pool table, that Where would that... be an upgrade. That's would an that... upgrade. That's definitely okay. an upgrade. I mean, like, look, spade a spade. That's an upgrade. You know, I, I think that's enough. So that's something that you definitely have to think about. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah. Better than a Y. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking I'll go to like a million on the Glenn Ford personal pool table and, Oh, wow. If after that, I'll probably bow out. And certainly if you want to go over a million at that point, but Dave, it's yours. that's where the, yeah. where, that's where the buyer's premium takes its, takes a dive. I mean, you're just, you're leaving money on the table at that. You're leaving money on the pool table at that point. <laughs> it's so dirty too. And Did, by the way, I'm just looking at, I'm looking at the stains oh on God, it. Oh God, the stories that pool table could probably oh tell. Oh my right? God, if that, if that pool table could talk to my other <laughs> pool just, table. Yeah. Just existential screaming. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part is, sorry, I just have to, Ford played countless games on this table with his friends and guests, such icons as John Wayne, Rita Hayworth, Frank Sinatra, William Holden, David Niven, Richard Burton, and Roy Rogers over the many years he owned it. So, I mean, I mean, come on. This That's is That's pretty good. Yeah, Richard Burton might have played pool I want, there. Yeah. I want William Holden's pool table. That's that's who I That's that's my over guy. my dead body. Um <laughs> uh the, I, perhaps more to come at the 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 live show yeah, to so think about because I, I do think for me uh, and this is just off the top of my head i think for me there's a there's a finite number on the y wing and then i guess the you know and that's yeah. certainly where i will go to and certainly if you're more than that we can discuss that and whatever because yeah i'm curious i'm yeah. curious what i'm curious what that I'm obviously we're not going to yeah. do that here but i'm curious what that is yeah i gotta think about it now that we've yeah. seen it all and stared at it and really you know, again, figured out what else I'm interested in because, uh, and then also be thinking about what else is coming up. So that's where it's always right. Because three weeks after this is the prop store auction. Three I imagine we'll prop be seeing that auction, catalog fairly soon. We're going to see it pretty darn soon. And I did, I did hear a rumor they've got Peter Lawford's personal pool table. He was in the Rat oh. Pack, so you know that's something. So oh, I, I a lot of. A lot of choices. A lot of choices. Yeah. Should we pool our money for pool <laughs> tables? <laughs> I'm looking for a pool table built by Greg Jean. That's what I want. A sort of a oh, space, nice. 
a space pool table built by Greg Jean. Yeah, that that would be the the real dream, right? Nice. Um, well, with Rathacon was... <laughs> phasers as far as the eye could see. You don't have you don't shoot the balls. You you fire stun at the at the Very balls. Good. Yeah, it's three dimensional pool, right? Isn't that what they played three? Yes, chess? that's right. That's that's it's how a three. Made. It's a triple layer pool table with the Vulcan. shorter stick. But yeah, yeah, Vulcan yeah. pool table. Um. <laughs> Well, that was a very enjoyable show and a first catalog. Well, not yeah. I was about to say a first catalog of this season. I started to say of 2024, and I was like, who am I kidding? No. We what what are we talking about? Options. Yeah. First catalog of the summer, sort of, not even. <laughs> I, I don't guess, even know anymore. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this week, certainly. Uh, no, I like this new format. It's very enjoyable. I, 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 feel, I don't feel uh, dead like I've gone through the desert right. with Moses. <laughs> at the end of these things like i used to uh very no, it'd be enjoyable. like an hour and a half and it would be like eight nine zero zero six greta garbo 13 by 10 portrait why are we still eight, talking nine, about greta garbo? Zero, zero, seven, gene harlow <laughs> at some point you're just running the auction without no, the bids. Y- yeah it's just like you're literally just doing the auction live and you just yeah. you're not getting to the pool tables and that's really what i've Get to the fucking pool tables, right? Cut to the pool tables. Yeah. Good good filmmaking advice. And with that, Dave, <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure, everybody. Uh, write us at dreamsaremadeofpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us at Props Podcast on all social media yeah, networks. Like, like and subscribe on your podcast app. Tell your friends. Watch, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Stuff Dreams Are Made Of, featuring lots of unboxing videos and maybe, hopefully, possibly some props from this very heritage auction, uh, depending Ooh. on where they are and if we can get there to them. That would be fun. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I will see you soon for the next one, Ryan, and soon in person. Very good. So very exciting. Looking, uh, looking forward. Yeah, very cool. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much. <laughs>